a person should prepare his table on Motzei Shabbat Kedei Lelavot Et HaShabbat in order to escort Shabbat out Ve'afilu Einu Tzarech El Kazait. even if you plan on eating a little bit that is sufficient we quoted the Gemara already and that's how we ended the last year that brings out the Maisa um, the Maisa with Rav Avo, I think it was I'm pretty sure it was with Rav Avo, that he ended up uh, preparing every Motzei Shabbat, he would shecht a full animal just to eat the kidneys. He would just have a little bit of the meat, but he would shecht a full animal, a covered malava malka. He held his special cover to do it. His son, when he grew up, said, Abba, aren't you overdoing it? Just make it before Shabbat. And whatever leftovers you have from Shabbat, you'll use it for malava malka. He did it, and the Kofa Chaim says he did it to be mechanich his child. That's what he says. He did it just for the sake of being mechanich his child. To teach him, he prepared it, and the lion ate the whole entire animal. He ended up losing the whole entire piece of meat, the whole entire thing. In order to show that, yes, from here we see a very important thing. This is what we're going to speak about today. A few important aspects. First of all, we see from here that there's an Indian to make mechubad. Make something mechubad from a lava manka. Don't make it as a minimum of a minimal. You're supposed to make it nice. He would check the whole animal for the sake. Second of all, even, uh, you should make a special preparation for Malava Malka. You shouldn't just be eating leftovers, officially, according to this thing. It should try to make something miyuchad for, um, from that. Okay, and sometimes even more than, uh, and, and the third thing is that you should try to have meat. That's what it sounds like from there. Ideally speaking, one should try to have meat. Okay, that's uh, what we came out. Now, what's with the Indian of Malava Malka? Let's get into the importance of it. Basically, Again, I quoted a couple of quick memories in the end of the last year, so let's just put it in a nutshell together, okay? The Vilna Gon is quoted in My Sarav. Also, the Chuvat Vehanagot is, is, uh, uh, is the Rav Sternbach. He is a Nin Venechet. He is an ancestor to the Vilna Gon. He has a head like, you know, you could tell it's from the smarts. Also, to the Vilna Gon, he quotes him very often. He says, It was known the Vilna Gon was very, very Mishtasheya, excited about Malava Malka. He used to be very Makbit to take some delicacy from him delicacy to be able to uh, do it. What's a delicacy for the Raman? Seven layer cake, some Entenmann's donuts. What, what do you think he used to have? He used to have a tznun, a turnip. Ah, wow, geschmacka. He used to have a nice uh, geschmacka turnip, a tznun, in order to be able to enjoy his malava malka. That's what he used to eat, to be able to, to have fun. But besides that, he was very makbid to always have it, even if he was sick, and one time he was throwing up, and he still forced himself to do it. To bring a mice there, even with Chaim Velazhina. That one time Rav Chaim Velazhina came to him and he wasn't feeling so well and the Rav, and the Rav asked him, the Vilna Gon asked him, did you have your Malava Malka today? And he said, I'll tell you the truth, Rav, for the Rav, I, I appreciate it, I, I, I did have Malava Malka, but I'm really not feeling well, so I had some uh, honey cake. You see, back then, even the Rav Chaim Velazhina was willing to have honey cake. Now, the Vilna Gon would eat honey cake. I said the delicacy of the Vilna Gon was a turnip. He had snun on Malav Malka. That was his uh, treat. Right? But he said, I had some honey cake. And the, they say over there, there's a lush in the Maiserav. The Vilna Gon laughed at him. Ha! Ah, you can't do that. What are you, crazy? He immediately sat him down and he made him wash. And he said, you're eating bread. He made him eat bread. Now we'll speak about eating bread in a minute. I just wanted to bring out that the Vilna Gon was very makbid on Malav Malka that everyone should have it. The Chazanish said, Mi shalo achal kazayit pat b'motzei Shabbat yit charet be'olam haba. If you don't have a kazayit of bread on Motzei Shabbat, you're going to have charet. And this is the Chazanish. This is only 80 years ago, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. He said that you should have um, such, a, such a thing. And we see from here the incredible importance of Malav Malka. Now, I have to put things in perspective. Malav Malka is not as uh, crazy important as the three meals. That's what the Graz says, the Baal Atanya. It's not on the same ramification as the three meals of Shalosh Shudas. And therefore, nafkamina, if a person only has some meat, so he should save it for the three meals of Shabbat instead of dishing it out to Malava Malka. But you should know that still Malava Malka is of essence. And therefore, if you have extra, you definitely should be using it for meat, like the Gemara, which I quoted to you before. Okay, if you only have enough for one or the other, that's when, uh, that's when you should do. Or, if you're not able to do both, so yes, the meals of Shabbat take precedence, as we know, and therefore, because that is a smach from the Pasuk, according to Taz, the three meals are De'araita even, on Shabbat. And this is De'arabonin, but Al-Kapanim, there is an importance to know the importance of this mitzvah to be able to have something good, basar, dagim, something that you can do, it's a very chashuv, and it's also to be mezalzel. You can't just go ahead and have just any little anything. You're supposed to go ahead and take advantage of it and do something good with it. Okay? That's the, I, uh, that's the idea. Okay? Now over here we have a very important nekuda, which uh, I want to mention. 
Okay? And that is, we all should know, and I'm going to show you a lot of things that connect to this Yisod, that on Malava Malka, we feed a very special bone. We feed a special bone that's known as the loose bone. Everybody knows there's a loose bone. It's funny because in the Sifra Kabbalah, it has a lot of names, you should know. It's also known as the Betuel, Yafemel, the Betuel Ramah. That's what's known in the Lashon the Zohar, it's known as the Betuel Ramah, meaning uh, Lashon Betuel is also like a Betula, that it's untouched, it was unfiltered, it was that hit by, by, by Chet, by sin, it's pure. That's A. Another word for it is Naschoi. Naschoi is the same gematria as Kum, is getting up because it brings you to Tchiat Ametim. That's brought in the Sidra Yaivitz. It's also brought in the Benishchai in Parshas Vayetze. It's called the Naschoi bone. We spoke about this in the life after death, Sharm. Al Kapadimi has a few names. The Luz bone, of course, we know there's the city of Luz, which also is a place of invincibleness. People did not die when they were in Luz. So the idea of the Luz is something of invincibility. What's the secret of this loose bone? What's the secret? Now, first of all, it's located all the way on the top. It says even Kenegi Jamakam Tefillin. So I don't know how that works. The top of your spine is the top bone, which is in the back of your neck over here, but it's Kilo parallel almost to the place of the Tefillin. It goes up to around here, so it's almost placed to the to the Kenegi the Makam of the uh, of the Tefillin. The highest the highest bone in your neck, I think, is where's it end around up here? I think if I'm not mistaken. Any doctors in the house? Yeah. Okay, but anyways, it goes up very high to the back of your orif, and it's almost connected to the parallel of the Makam Tefillin, and that's why it has so much capabilities. Now, why is this bone so special? Because what's special about this bone, and this is very interesting, it's also mentioned over here in the Shari Tziyun, Bekitzer, in Shari Tziyun uh, Zayin, Zayin, is because it is only, it's only able to eat foods that are eaten on Motzei Shabbos. Anything it eats during the week, it is not sustained. Meaning the only time you actually feed this bone and keep it alive, sustain it, is Motzei Shabbat. So that's why it's not Kedai to miss a Motzei Shabbat. On Motzei Shabbat, that's the place where it lasts. That's the place where it's able to live. And, there, one second, one second, and therefore it's very important to feed it every Motzei Shabbat so it doesn't Kebiyochol die. And because of that, we want to have it alive and kicking in order that it will bring us back in Tchiat HaMeitim. So far so good? I didn't finish, but say it again. You want to wait till I finish? Okay. So this is the bone that will keep us alive and gets fed on Motzei Shabbat in order to be, come back in Tchiat HaMeitim. And that's why this is the school of Tchiat HaMeitim. Now why is it that this brings us back in Tchiat HaMeitim? So listen to this, very important Yisod, is since it only eats on Motzei Shabbat, what does that mean? On Adam Arishan, when did he eat from that, from that uh, Eitz Adat? When did he eat from the Eitz Adat? It was on? Friday. Friday, on Yom Shishi. I would put it called Yom Shishi. I wouldn't call it Friday. That's okay, right? But, you're right. but uh, he ate on, on Yom Shishi on the sixth day of creation. Since he ate from the sixth day of creation, we all know, I feel bad to break the news, but on the sixth day of creation, that, it, uh, that, it, that you fed that bone, on the sixth day of creation that it fed the bone, that's when... We all had a death sentence upon all of us. Nobody in this, Bezat Shem Mashiach is going to come, we won't have to die, which is also much like it if we're going to die and come back. But anyways, during that idea, because of that, everybody has a death sentence on top of them, because of that faithful day that Adam Rishon ate from that. But that was on Yom Shishit. On Yom Motzei, so everybody ate from that tree, all parts of his body ate from that tree, and therefore Adam Rishon is going to die and all his descendants. Except for one part, the one part that didn't eat from the tree, the loose bone. The loose bone never ate from there. Why didn't he eat? Because he only eats on Motzei Shabbat. So he didn't get any sustenance from the tree on Friday, on Yom Shishi. So since he didn't get on the other day, so he lives on forever. What a geshmaka hatzala. Now if someone didn't die, he was the one who was around. So therefore the loose bone lasts forever because he never in effect really ate that fig tree or, or the other two pshatim. Okay, he never ate from, from the geffen or the fig or the etrog. He never ate from it because he doesn't get sustained on that day. So here we have this fantastic vehicle within us. Why waste it? Make sure you feed it on Motzei Shabbat and it will keep you intact for the fact that you can come back on Tchiat HaMetim. Beautiful. That is the Yisod of the Luzbon and that's the Yisod of Malav Malka. That's why Malav Malka is more important than any other meal. Any other, I, I shouldn't say that. It's a, that's why it's a very important meal and that's why there are a lot of segulot on this meal because it's the one that keeps you on forever. It's one that keeps you, keeps you alive and going for a long time. Good, beautiful. Why That's what happens. Say again. You mean because it doesn't die anyways? You're saying it has to come back with the with the rest of the goof, so it has to come back. But yeah, 
Lamaisa, the Kafa Chaim brings down, when he talks about it, he actually says that no matter what you do to it, nothing affects it. It's invincible. You could burn it with fire, you could do everything, it lasts. No matter where, you know, no matter what happened, Lo Aleinu, what happened in the Holocaust, the loose bone stuck around, and that's where your body's going to get built from that bone. So the stronger it is, the better it is for you. That's what you're trying to, uh, that's what you're trying to do. Okay, that's an important yesod what it is. And from here we can understand a lot of yesodot based on that idea of a lot of zgulot. You'll hear a lot of zgulot when we talk about eating malava malka. And they're all connected, in my opinion, to the same yesod, that it is based on, it's the, it's the meal that gives us invincibility. It's the meal of tchiat meitim. Or more or less, it's the meal that is above the chet of Adam Rishon. It's the meal above chet of Adam Rishon. So here we have it. Listen to a few of them. First of all, the Mora Etzba, that's a chidah, and the Yusuf B'Shor Shavoyda says that if a person eats Malava Malka, you're nitzel michibut a kever. You don't get the slamming of the cave, the, the, the grave. What is that? There's, we had two or three shirm in the life after death shirm about what chibut a kever is, ayin sham. But basically, it's during, immediately after a person gets buried, it's not comfortable. How about we'll just say that? It's not comfortable inside the grave. Now, how does a person get saved? By eating from a lava malka, it saves you from eating from there. So that's also connected because the whole idea of being in the grave and pain in the grave all comes from the sin of Adam Arisha, and the lava malka can actually save you from there. It's interesting where Sternbach has a tshuva in Reish Samech Zayin where he has a different shot. It's actually connected to our Navi Shir, this, this Sir Sternbach, because it overlaps what we're speaking about in Navi and also here. But he basically says that he gives a different shot it's interesting. We're speaking in Navi Shir about um, time zones and international daylight right now, Bimmy Kreb. And uh, the idea is that we know that even though we're in Israel right now, and it could be Shabbat today, well, it's not because we have a camera on, but if it would be Shabbat, we all know that it's still uh, even Motzei Shabbat in Eretz Israel, but it's still in America, it's still, it's still a Shabbat. Or if, on, or if you're on Friday, an Erev Shabbat in, in, in uh, Eretz Israel, in Australia, it's already Shabbat. So he says a big chidush, the auspices of Shabbat, we, we're the center of the world in Eretz Israel. however the auspices of Shabbat influence us even from Eretz Israel. And therefore, even if it's Motzei Shabbat, but since there's still Shabbat in the air, there's still Shabbat on the planet, still Shabbat exists in the world, so therefore this meal connects to Shabbat, and therefore it's as if I'm eating still on Shabbat, and it saves you from chibut to kever. That's what he wants to say. But I'll tell you why he's referring to it, because he's referring to there's a there's a din, and it's important to know this, that on Erev Shabbat, if a person gets buried on Erev Shabbat, some people say only in Eretz Yisrael, you get saved from chibut to kever. A person doesn't get chibut to kever. So, you know, it's kedai, when, when, uh, you, when you pass away, try to do it on Friday. Try to make sure it works out on Friday, do your best that you can uh, try to work it out. I don't recommend doing it, but if you do, it already should work out on Friday. It works out, I mean, Shabbat also with the... Uh, early on Friday. Yeah, or, no, it's actually after Chatz... Uh, you mean, because that will be too late. Yeah, then you'll end up missing it, right? So try to... Yeah, we have watches these days, you can figure it out, it's not a big deal, you can do it. The truth is, you should know, in the, in the Lo'a Leinu, in the, in the Harnof Massacre, they all got buried after, besides the fact that they died on Kiddush Hashem, they all got buried mamish tzamut to Erev Shabbat, and they all were, mamish definitely were saved from kibbutz kever. I can mamish tell you 100% they were saved from kibbutz kever. Because what they, inside what they went through, obviously, but uh, what they, and there were big tzaddikim, I knew a few of them, and uh, besides that, they were, uh, what should we call it, they were buried at the, at the right time also. So they were saved. But al kopanim that's, that's the Yisod, that a person is saved from kibbutz kever. So he says a pshat, he says the reason why is because on Erev Shabbat, it's still Shabbat in other places. So it's kilo, you're getting buried on Shabbat also. So since you're also getting buried on Shabbat, he says you get saved from kibbutz kever. That's what he says. I just want to point out that you see that this meal is the one that saves you from the grave. A, it gives you tchiat ametim. B, it gives you a chibut a kever, a protection from chibut a kever, as we just said, from the chida and the Yisod B'Shor Shavoyda. Also, we find that um, the Gemara says in Shabbat and Kufi Yutet, melugma. It's a person, it's merapid adam. If a person eats malava malka, it's, it, it heals a person, it makes him feel good. The Kafachaim brings us in Siv Katan Dalin, and he writes that it's ki'ilu afshu, uh, he says it's, 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 uh, it helps you. 
Listen to what he adds based on the Ben Yishchai, by the way. The Kafah Chaim says, and even if you're full, you're not interested in eating. Now, I'm not talking about Chila Gasa. Okay, but still, you're not interested in eating. You should still push yourself to eat something. If you don't want to take medicines and be stuck on pills all your life and to have problems of being sick, you should eat Malav Malka. We know the Vilna Gon was a very healthy man. He was a man that didn't go to a doctor until Soif Yomav because it was very makbid on how he ate Malav Malka and how, uh, how he did in general. Okay? But that is the Sud also that is brought here. That even if you push yourself based on the Gemara, it's a healing mechanism. Okay? It's a healing mechanism. Next, another thing that it does, it also helps for Zera Shel Kayamin to have children and a woman to have a Leda Kala. When a woman is pregnant, if she wants to have a Leda Kala, everybody likes to open the parochet. Everybody likes to open the, uh, the uh, parochet. Is it English? The, the curtain of the, uh, of the Sefer Torah. Everybody jumps at it and fights about it and they forget the easiest thing. This is directly to the woman. That's just you doing it for her. Let's do an easier mahalach. Right? It depends what shul you're on, then she'll do it. But say it, usually we try not. I wasn't sure what they did once. <laughs> but, uh, but the easiest thing is that she should eat malava malka. Malava malka is a great thing for a leda kala. It helps her to have a leda kala that things will not be, uh, will not be hard. That's also in the Kafachaim here. He brings, Shashama b'shem arav elimelech, zgula lenashim shelo yitkashu b'leda tam. Sheyochlu b'kol motzei Shabbat Kodesh Eze Dover l'shem mitzvah tzuudah malav amalka v'al yedei zei yildu b'nakel be'ezrat Hashem yid barach. What a segula that people don't know about it. He says Eze Dover. We're going to get to Eze Dover soon about what you should be eating, but he's being lenient. He's saying Eze Dover. I would have said bread personally, but he says Eze Dover. He's being makele. He's not going to get away with cake. But we're going to speak about what that Eze Dover is supposed to be. But at least you see that he knows that women are not always going to want to eat, and this he knows always the diet, and you know. So they don't want to, but at least they should eat something for this Leda Kala. And I think, this is my own two self, I can just connect it. I think it's very connected to what we spoke about before. Because what do we say before? The whole idea of Malava Malka, that's the, that's the Suda against Adam Arishan. That's the Skula, the Suda that's above Adam Arishan. We all know what was her punishment, what was the, the woman's punishment. She, she's going to have Tzara Gidol Banim and also to have a Tzara, what's the name of it's going to come with a very big difficulty. So therefore, the segula for that is to have meaning the neged, the chet that she did, this is the anti-neged to be able to save her from the chet. It all falls into the same category, the same idea of sickness, refuah, chibut kever, tchiat ameitim, be'etz of tel I know you want to ask something, let me just finish one more. And one last one also, it's brought also in the Ritzgi, it's also in the Kafachayim, in a different seif cotton and bet, that it's also a segula for parnasa. Uh, uh, partner said, now we're talking one second. Rabbi, expand here a little bit. Let's hear. If you eat over here, you're going to have good partner said. It helps for the, it helps for the thing. That's what the Kafachayim brings also from the Marit's Giyut. He brings us to school from partner said. He says, why? What's the reason why? Because uh, this Su'uda is the connector from Shabbat to the whole entire week. You want the Zagul of Shabbat to last the whole entire week. So therefore, it works to be able to give you a certain type of influence during the week. And he says a very important Yisod. He says this, listen closely, that there is two aspects to, um, to the connection between Shabbat and the whole week. There is the external and the internal, the chitzoni and the pnimi. We try to, that's, it's like that in all of Kabbalistic writings. We have a connection to the rest of the week in a pnimi way, in a more internal way, and also external way. He says the external way of connecting Shabbat to the whole week is with our meals. So we have a suda malava malka, and externally that connects us to the rest of the Shabbat, to the rest of the week, and that helps us on our parnasa. And there's also a connection, pnimi, that's with our tefillot, with our davening. That's why we say on Mutz'ei Shabbat Vayihi Noam, after our tefillah, in order to make that chibur, that connection between the Shabbat and the whole entire, in the whole entire week. So we have a connection externally and internally with, with the boat. And the Kavachayim writes in Sib Kotanei that you should actually have kavana when you do it to be mechaber. He says, Vayi Noam, Vachar Kacha Achila Koydin Berkat Mazam in the Gei Lomar. He says that, and you should have kavana. To be mechaber between the two things. Hareini bala kayem mitzvah suda revit shal motzei shabbat kodesh kedei lamshicha ara misudat shabbos le sudat achol ule taken and chorsh mitzvah zubim alkom ha'elyon. But you know, 
He says that's the kavanah that you should have in order. You're trying to make a connection with the meal and with the davening of you know him between Shabbat and to spill over to the rest of the week. And that's a sadula for Parnasa. Why Parnasa? So I go back to what I said before, and I think it's connected. We said the sin of the woman, of course we know the punishment that she got, was Be'etzev Tildi Banim, and therefore she'll have an easy later. Of course we know, what did the man get smacked with? Kotz with our job, Pecha. He's going to get Be'etzev Pecha Tocha Lechem. It's all Parnasa. All our Parnasa issues is because of that fateful day. You know, male, okay, so we can't live for 120 years, but why Parnasa? Why Parnasa? That's the hard one. And you have to go ahead and deal with all your parnasa, which you know takes up much more time than anything else in your, in your life. It's crazy. If you think how much time you put into your parnasa, the amount of years you learned in school to be able to finally get whatever degree or whatever to you have to get to be able to get there. And then the amount of hours you put in daily and the amount of time and workspace and, and mind space you put into it. It's a crazy thing. You, you would just say you wish Adam Risha never ate from the tree. I'm saying, it's, you, it's, a, it's, an, it's an annoying thing. But Gopalim, why Dafka? Since that was again. So Malava Malka is a Segula. Can I get that punishment? So here we have it. Can I get all three punishments? One, Parnasa. B, can I get the woman? And C, the idea of death. All, all the refuas, all the schoolers, all the hatzlacha, all with malava malka. So what's wrong with you? Why are you eating malava malka? You should be eating malava malka. We should be having the shir during a Matzah Shabbat during malava malka. This is incredible. It's incredible how much of a power this koach of this su'uda has. Yes, Mr. Eric, want to ask me? Forgot? <laughs> so earlier you said that uh, opening the parochet could do something with the woman. Uh, Aren't uh, okay, you know, you know, free phone? I'm sorry. Opening the parochet. Some with the yeah, there is a segula. This is brought in the kafchaim also that of opening the parochet when you, when one's wife is pregnant is a segula for a later kala. It helps with the in the chol chodeshachi in the last month, especially in the last month. Yeah, and especially in the last month, and you'll see many people fighting over it because of that idea. Kushman, Kushman's very against. He never lets people do it. He's very, okay. oh, he doesn't like this school. Who 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 said the woman eats? That's Kavchaim. He brings from the Shem, the Rav Eli Melech, he says. He brings his Orchot Yosher. And it's also in the Benish Chai, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. A Rav Eli Melech Zal. I don't think it's a Chesidosh Apois. <laughs> Anyways, that's, uh, that's that. Okay? Now, that's, uh, that's that with the Segulas. That was the fun part. We don't swear to always like Segulas. But there's a lot more. The Rambam, first of all, we have a whole separate simon in Shulchan Aruch, simon shin. This is the last simon that is discussing this topic. But we have a whole separate simon that discusses the idea of, of, uh, of Malav Mark. And that's the Rambam also brings that this Suda is brought together with the rest of the Suda Shabbat. He brings it to show us a simon how important this Suda is. And whoever, and, and that's why it's so important. Now the Kafah Chaim brings in Sif Kotan Tedvav a Zohar. In the Zohar it says more or less, that Misha, these are the words of the Zohar Kodesh quoting you from the Kafachai. Misha and Makayim Suda Revi'it, Nechshavlo Ki'ilu Lo Kiem Suda Shlishit. You didn't Kiem Suda Shlishit either. And therefore, he says it's very important. That's based on the Chesed Alafim. Now, what's the reason for this? So, I one time saw Pshat. I think the, the meaning behind it is because everybody eats at nighttime. We all have dinner. We all have supper. Everybody eats every night. So here you have it. You had a meal on Sudash Lishit, which went, it spilled over into nighttime. And therefore, if you only ate Sudash Lishit, it doesn't show that you ate because you're interested. Ma'asab mochichim zeh But if you go afterwards and eat Malava Malka, so then you're proving that each meal was for the sake of doing it for, for the sake of Shabbat. For the sake of Shabbat and not because I was stam hungry or because that's the appropriate day to eat. I one time said, this for it. the same you said that's why Shalashudas is called Shalashudas right we know it's called Sudash Lishit but another expression the Litva should call it is Shalashudas why is it called Shalashudas so he said the reason is at night time I'm hungry I eat daytime you're hungry you eat Shalashudas you're not so hungry so therefore if you eat Shalashudas that proves I'm afraid on the first two meals that you ate at Lashem into Shabbat but those people and it's really true people are not you know people are like the modern Kebiyocho the modern type of things, they don't eat shalashudas. They eat the night meal and they eat the day meal. Why don't they eat shalashudas? The answer is they only ate those meals because pasha, that's just, you know, that's when we eat meal. We're hungry. We want to eat. So, okay, so we'll say kiddush beforehand to just to make it a little bit more festive. It's fine. But it shows that it wasn't necessarily Shem Shemayim. When you eat shalashudas, it's megale, not only on that meal, but on all three meals. And that's why shalashudas, it's called shalashudas. It has the tangibility of three meals. That gives you the oomph of three meals. So the Kavah Chaim says, B'Shem the Zohar Kodesh, the same thing with Malava Malka. When you eat Malava Malka, you're showing that you're not only eating for dinner purposes, you're eating because you mean it. Vim Ken. 
And therefore he brings also in the Ben Ishchai, says as a long tshuva in Rav Pa'alim, that someone said that he's doing pei dalit taniyot, the, the 84 taniyot, the 84 fasts. And part of doing it overlaps with the Motzei Shabbat eating, and he asked the Ben Ishchai if it's okay. And the Ben Ishchai said, Has v'shalom, you don't sacrifice your Malava Malka, don't you dare sacrifice Malava Malka. Afilu kishoy said pei dalit taniyot, or he's making up saka, yizayar shalol levatel sudaravich. You're not allowed to go ahead and, uh, and do it as a lot of tikkunim in the Kabbalistic worlds, and therefore we have to be very makvid, not to switch. I already quoted from the Vilna Gon that his wife was doing the big fasts. She was fasting a lot of fasts, the wife of the Vilna Gon. I guess to be the wife of the Vilna Gon, it's brought in the Maisa Rav, that she was doing it, and he found out, someone sent a message to him, it was his wife, was someone to send a message, that his wife is going to sleep on Motzei Shabbat without eating. Because she went and she started the fast, Right after, Monte, right after Shabbat, she started her next fast because she's doing a certain amount of fast. And he sent a message to his wife. You know, they were very close, but you know, he, he saw her once, every, once a week, basically. Friday night was the one time he saw her, basically. And he sent a message to his wife. He went to Shabbat, tell, her, tell my wife that she has to eat. Tell her to get out of bed. She was ready in bed. He told her to get out of bed, wake her up, and go ahead and eat something. Don't try this at home. The Vilna Gon is allowed to do this. Don't, don't try this. It's too dangerous. Say it. But at least the Vilna Gon was allowed to do that, and he made to do that. So you see from here the importance of, um, of doing that. Say it. That's, uh, that's that. Now, also, in addition to everything we said, the Kavachayim brings, and we know that this is an important uh, concept that we all know. This is called the Suuda of David Amelech. Yesh Lomar, this is called the Suda of David Amelech. It's known the Suda. There's two things that's called the Suda of David Amelech and Eliyahu Novi. It's not a contradiction because it's a Suda of Mashiach. We know that Mashiach doesn't come on Friday night, Friday, because he just push it, doesn't want to bother us. Your wife's busy cooking and night. He's going to come. Not nice. You know, he's going to come and tell us Mashiach, say, oh, I'm in the middle of my soup and this man's bent. It's frustrating. So he's not going to come on Friday. Shabbat, he's not allowed to come. So Eliyahu Novi is going to come be Mavaser on. Motzei Shabbat. He's going to come in Mavasar Motzei Shabbat that he's coming. And that is David Melech, the king of kings, the king of Mashiach. He's going to come and explain to us. And that's why, that's, that's A, that's one of the reasons, by the way. Another reason also brought why it's called the Suda of David Melech, besides the heralding of Mashiach, is because, um, why? Because David Melech was meant to, um, was meant to uh, pass away on Shabbat, as we all know. That's why we say Tzitchot Chad. Moshe Rabbeinu and David Melech both knew that they were going to pass away on Shabbat. And since they were meant to pass away on Shabbat, they were very, every time Matzei Shabbat happened, he made a festivity, he made a big party. David Melch was very excited. Every Malava Malka was a big party for him. He just got saved from a Mishpat Shemaim. He knew he had one more week of life. He didn't know when that Shabbat was going to be. And he always was very happy when he was in Yitzel from, from, uh, from that thing. And therefore, he says, Dai sudata de David Malka. Be'achrikach l'shem yuchud, you should say shem yuchud, that I'm coming to be Makayim this uh, suda, and therefore you should have in mind that it's a suda of uh, David Melech, as, as he points out here. Center, that's the idea that the Kafachayim tells us, so that's important to know that that's why we say Mizmullah David, or Da'i Sudat David Malkata, and you say L'shem yuchud for that reason, and that's what uh, you're trying to do, besides the uh, Eliyahu Anavi. The Siddur Yaivitz, which is Rabbi Yaakov Emden, also brings down, you say, David Melech Yisrael Chai Vekayam, because of this reason also you're supposed to, you're supposed to do it. Okay? That's, a, that's that. Stam, Eliyahu Novi, you say 130 times. That's the Benish Chai. The Benish Chai says to do it 130 times with a more Kor Chaim. The El Yirab and the Benish Chai all say, why 130 times Eliyahu Novi? The Gematria of Eliyahu Hanavi with the Koilo, for those who are actually doing the math, is 130. Okay? With the Koilo means you count the letters also. It comes out to 130. Also, the Gematria of Eliyahu is the Gematria of Ben, which is 52. Ben is one of the names of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. It's one of the higher, one of the high names of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, how you have it. And therefore... He says that uh, we tried to say Eliyahu and Navi during this um, during this time period. Seder, that's uh, that's that. Okay, that's uh, that's that. By the way, the Mishabura is in Reis Sadi Hay Zayin. In Reis Sadi Hay Zayin, over there, he brings about Eliyahu and Navi coming on Motzei Shabbat because of uh, because of this reason. One more thing I want to mention also on Motzei Shabbat when you're doing this. 
Umitam ze says the Mishabura, Yeshle Noagim la Harbot Nerot be Motse Shabbat Yotermi Mechol. There's an Indian of lighting candles to make it Chagigi, to make it festive. The Noagim Gamkin Lomar Piutim Uzmirot Achar Avdala. Immediately after Havdala, also we try to delay Motse Shabbat, so therefore we sing Zmirot, we sing Piutim. Like I said, it's also a festive meal, so therefore even before Avdala, after Avdala, we go ahead and we try to make it as festive as possible. And we do that by uh, singing piyutim zmirot and having uh, uh, candles and trying to make it. And people do that. You see many Hasidic places. When they make a malava malka, they'll have it a candle at dinner. They'll make it very, very nice in order to be able to, uh, to make it as nice as possible. Okay, that's the kalal, more or less, of the uh, malava malka, of how it's supposed to look and what you're trying to uh, do. It. Now we want to get into what you're supposed to eat. What are you supposed to eat at the time of malava malka? My goal was to finish Simon Shin. Uh, today. Okay, so let's try our best. Here we go. What are you supposed to eat at the time of Malka? Classically speaking, I think we all know that you're basically supposed to eat bread. Okay, you're supposed to do every su'uda, ain't su'uda a little pat. We know that a sidur shulchan is with pat. It's supposed to be with a pat. Also, the shari tziyun in bet. If you look in shari tziyun in bet in the Mishabura, when the Mishabura writes, it's mashman the Gemara that you should make a su'uda on the pat dafka, you should make it on bread. He brings because stam sidur shulchan, there's a Mishabura in Shior Tzion, says mashman on the pat. Usually when you make a table, you make it with bread. And also it says that he would be masadir on Erev Shabbat. So just like an Erev Shabbat, just like when you go into Shabbat, you have it on bread. So too when you exit Shabbat, it should also be on bread. Based on that also, we find that the Benish Chai and the Kafah and the Vilnagon say to try to have Lecha Mishnah even. Believe it or not, you should try to have two breads if you're entering Shabbat and exiting Shabbat with the same auspices. So maybe in both of them you should really have a, a Lechem Mishnah, a double Lechem in order to be able to, uh, to, be able to take care of it. Very interesting uh, idea to be able to try to, try to be Machmer. He also mentions Ve'od de Amr Sham B'Samuch Pat Chama B'Moitzi Shamas Melugma. It's good to have hot bread on Shabbat because that is Melugma, that's a way of doing refuah. So meaning you should have fresh bread, don't take some old stale piece of bread that's left over in the corner, right? Or something, have something. Try to have something nice. It's very ideal. Ideally speaking, again, I'll say I'm talking in the ideal. But really, a person is supposed to try to make a special challah just from a lot of You make a special challah for each meal. You should really try to be eating uh, uh, the best that you can, a hot, a hot thing. And that's what he brings over here in the Kavachayim also. The idea for Rafua to have pat chama and Motzei Shabbos melugma. And he says over here, the Kavachayim, lo chama mamash. Don't have very hot. You should know having very hot bread is bad for you. It's brought down in the Gemara that that's considered one of the sakonot to have very broad bread. He just says it should be taken out of the oven, cooled down. It's still a little bit warm. Probably what you're used to with your chalas, hopefully, when your wife, if your wife makes chalas. And therefore, you warm it up and try to do it. And therefore, that's how you can enjoy your, your hot, the kium of hot bread without it being a sakana. Okay, and he says that's called chupat eliyahu. Uh, it's only if it comes up boiling out that you shouldn't eat. But if it's in its career a little bit, it cools down, so then you're good to go. That's the words of the Kafachaim who says that is sufficient. Say it? It sounds like if, you, if you're to take bread later and warm it up, that has no problem, right? It's Correct. Fresh. That's fine. That's also fine, yeah. You take it, but just don't make it hot bread. No. You're talking about straight fresh? It could be. It could be. I know what you're saying. No, no why? Because, I mean, we make pizza. We make like he bread. says, yeah, he does say that. He says, when you do that, so it's stomach viofala. Yeah, it's stomach viofala. If it's in a way that's good, that's not so bad. You're right. No, you're right, he says. He says, when you're mechamem or virotz alechamem yichadash or kiwa shapir, dummy, then it's okay. He says, if you're just coming to reheat something, so then it's okay. It's only if it comes fresh out of the oven, boiling hot in this, then you should be waiting until it cools down, like you said. I, I, I would say, you know, just I'll peep shot because then the dough still hasn't uh, congealed, hasn't gotten hot. So maybe that's bad for you. It's very bad for your stomach, gives you stomach aches. Okay, anyway, so that's, that's that. That's A. Ideally speaking, we have bread. Many times it's very hard for us to have bread. We can't have bread. We don't have bread. It's not around in the or it's a chilagasa, etc. Things are a little bit of a problem. So says the Mishabrua in Sif Katan Aleph. Um, uh, it's good to have bread. So you should definitely have basar and shartoshin. If you're worried about a chila gas, or you just can't have bread, it's just not going to go. Kigon bekayit, where it's very, where, you know, where you, 
it's it's very late. La Khola Suda Shlish Tamakler, you kaima be mezonot. You should at least have mezonot classically, just like we have by uh Sudash Lishit, that if you're not gonna have it on bread, then we know you're allowed to do cake, patababikisnin, specifically not not uh, noodles. And I'm not talking about bisli. You try to do it with patababikisin, which is bread and rugluch or any of these types of things. No, I said bread, any type of cakes and all these types of things, which are okay, that's the way to be able to take care of it. If that's not sufficient, so then you can go ahead and have payrot, says the Mishabur. You can have some type of fruits. The Sota Shulchan says if you can't, Sota Shulchan says if you don't have that in the Ivets, so you can have a nice hot drink, a cup of coffee, have some hot chocolate with cookies. Once upon a time we should do that. Right? The hot chocolate with cookies. That's also a good thing. You have cookies, you have hot food. At least something should be done. You're asking, that's what, you're asking what, what are women obligated to have? That's what they, these minimum is what they should have. They should actually have something that they're able to, uh, to do, to be able to keep to. Say again? Yeah, he says in Lechat Chil, you should have Basar Vishav Tavshilim. That's what really, you really should be having. Okay, so leftover chillant. What's wrong with the leftover chillant? <laughs> or for, for Sunday. That's for Sunday, right? They all say, they all say, Bachram have chillant on Friday, on, th- on Thursday night, and Avrechim have it on Sunday night, right? Now the chillant on Sunday night. But he said to have basar and tafshilim. Yeah, he definitely says you should. You should definitely. It's, it's the Gemara. The Gemara says he would prepare that that uh, steak. And uh, the Gemara in Kufiyutet says that he would shecht an animal in order to have basar. So the Marsha and the and the, the Kavchayim also brings it, but the others say that you should have meat. The better, the more you do, the more it helps with the lose bone. The more festive you make the meal. They say like this, listen to this. Even if you don't do that, you look in a Shulchan Aruch. What does the Shulchan Aruch say? He says, even if you're not going to eat a teeny bit, forget it, you're not going to eat. At least prepare the table. If you can't even eat, at least make the table festive, make it look good. Try to get it. It says over there by Rav Avimi, the person I spoke to you about, that he would prepare a lot. He would prepare meat and do everything, but even if he didn't that, at least it would be Paris Mapa. You would try to do something like the Mishabur says in the beginning of Aleph, Hainu Lifras Mapa, Al Shulchan Adir Kavud, make it a little bit, Bechen Chardvarim Noegim Etzal Richachon, to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit festive, to make it look good. And lastly, that the you know that we would bring out is actually making food for other people's. You I mean even if you don't, even if you fe- prepare the food just for your wife or for your kids or something to make something to make it a little bit there. That's what you should do. The task is that the Tosa Shabbos at least you should try to make it so that something else is uh, mm-hmm. is there. Okay, so therefore, or you can leave the or the the mapa from Shabbat, or. Or, and you also should be dressed for Malava Malka on Shabbat. They say, Rav Chaim Kariyevsky, I know someone who was there, he said he would immediately eat Malava Malka because he, he was makbid to have Shabbos clothes on until the Malava Malka. So in order to avoid wearing Shabbos clothes too long on Mutzay Shabbat, you would immediately eat Malava Malka right after Avdallah. There wouldn't be a problem. And I still, to this day, cannot figure out what's called Shabbos clothes by Chaim Kariyevsky. He doesn't wear a tie. He wears the same <laughs> Why did he wear much different? Maybe his jacket. Look at his jacket, I guess. I'm not sure what it was. But he was very from you should know. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's what it is. That you, you wear a big day Shabbat, and you're supposed to do it with a, a big day Pe'er, as it says. The Kafachayim also brings over here in Sivkot and Vav this idea. And I brought to you already about the Nerut and doing everything. You should make a Zimun if you're able to do a Baroi Valmadu and Melech. And, uh, you know, the, the stipe they even bring down would take off the Mapa and bring it back. The Kafachayim and the Ben Ishchai and Rafalaji, all of them say that we say Migdol instead of Magdil to show that it's a Su'udat Mitzvah. It's a special type of uh, Su'udat that we do because we even are showing to the extent of the greatness of, um, of, of what it is. Beseder? That's the things. Do I have a minute or two or not? Just to finish up or not? It's Chaval. What? Wait, do I have another minute or two or not? Or should I stop? Should I stop? Or uh, could you next time? Two minutes? One minute. Let me just finish up here because I really want to finish. Okay? The Magad Avram says that, like we said, you it's Roy. The Magad Avram over here says, just like we spoke out already from the Mishabura and the uh, Gemara, that you should make it festive with a lot of good things and meat and all this fancy stuff. That's what you're supposed to do. Not to eat Pitzimtzum, to try to do it as best as... Um, as you can. The Ben Ishchai brings, and I told you already from the Vilna Gon, to take some type of delicacy, something that you like, something special. You like some type of special cake, you like some type of special dessert, some type of, I don't know what, some type of special food, you should save it, especially just from a lot of Malka, they say dafka is something you did not eat on, Monse, on Shabbat, something special that's meyuchad. And the Chazim Seifers is a beautiful pshat in his drushas, he says the reason why is you're supposed to cook on Motzei Shabbat something special, why, like Rav Avahu did, instead of just having leftovers for Shabbat, because you're trying to connect this meal to the rest of the, to the, rest of the week. So the way to make the connection is by cooking on now on Monsei Shabbat, and that cooking connects this meal to the rest of the week. It, complete, it, keep, uh, it keeps it completely 
um, uh, connected. Okay, and that's why um, that's why you shouldn't just take over only leftovers. You should have something special. However, there are those that say you should also have leftovers because there is something special about Shabbat food. We know that even during the nine days when you can't eat meat during the nine days, the Kafachaim says from Malava Malka, you're allowed to have leftovers from Shabbat. If you have a chicken soup, you're allowed to eat it on Malava Malka. Believe it or not, because it's leftovers from Shabbat. It had the kedusha of Shabbat, the time of Shabbat inside of it, so you can have leftovers. So therefore, we have two things. On one count, you're supposed to have leftovers. On the other count, you're supposed to have special meals. So they actually say to do both. The Gav Chaim says a pshara. He says take something left over and reheat it on Motzei Shabbat. Which is what we do, you know, we reheat the, the children sometimes to be able to do that. So you should have the best of both worlds, but to try to have something that actually spills over into, uh, into Shabbat. Also, women are, are, are meant to eat this meal. Like I told you already before, there's no reason why to. Even It's not considered Motzei Shabbat on Grama, and it helps with the Leda Kala, like I've already told you, that you're supposed to, um, you're supposed to do it. Many times people have difficulty doing it, what they rely on, says the Eli Rab, says uh, some of the poskim, the Eli Rab. The Eli Rab says that Sudash Lishi, which you ate into Motzei Shabbat, maybe that can count as Malava Malka. Extremely bedi evid, we don't hold that way, obviously, but that's a little bit of a smach. Or another thing that they do is to drink something, have a little bit of something to eat. You should always have the minimum or the minimal or set your table. Like I said to you before, that's the best way to be able to do it. The latest, and with this I finished, the latest time to eat is a machloket. It seems to be in the Yisod Rishor Shavodi, you have Dalit Sha'ot, four, sh- four hours into the nightfall, which comes out, let's say, at 10 o'clock or something like that, Mashu Kazeh, that's where Falaji brings it in Kafa Chaim also, Yisod Rishor Shavodi, the, 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 the Mishabur quotes it in uh, Siv Kotun Bet. But Lamaisa, if you look in the Ben Yishchai and the Sifrei Kabbalah and everything, the Koach of Kedusha Shabbat is until Chatzot. Most of the place can go with this, that therefore the Koach of Kedusha Shabbat is until Chatzot. They said, don't do Vidui on Motzei Shabbat until Chatzot. After Chatzot, you can go ahead and do Vidui because it's still a little bit of Shabbat. So we see that the Koach lasts until Shabbat. And therefore, most of the place came the Vilna Gon, the Ben Yishchai, the Stipler, the Chazanish, say you have until Chatzot Bedi Evan and Bedi Evan to eat it. You should try as soon as possible to eat it because they all ask, what's the connection between? Between this meal and Shabbat, it must be that you try to do it as soon as possible. Ad kedekach that there are some people who are of the opinion the Ben Yishchai disagrees that you should not do any malacha, no malacha until you actually eat malava malka. Believe it or not, that's already hard to do. They say it's hard to do, so they say have a cup of coffee, say it or do something. But you should know that there is such a thing that malava malka and sudat Shabbat should always be as interconnected as possible. That in the sum up is malava malka. Say it. We finish next week is a special shear for the covered Hanukkah.